What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be looking at every single modification I have done to my Grom. Now, first off, to let you guys know, in the description is gonna be time links with links to the specific videos that I'm talking about. Everything is gonna go in chronological order for the most part, from the first day I got the Grom to you know the parts that I've made up to now. So starting off at the very beginning, the first thing I did when I got the Grom was tear the motor apart, which was kind of stupid, but tore the whole motor apart and went ahead and ported the head and ported the throttle body by Vinny. Um, everything went very smoothly, put it all back together, and it was a lot more powerful, especially up high. It could just breathe a lot better. Next up on the list was changing out the handlebars, the god-awful stock handlebars that would be bent and broken by the time I have dropped it as many times as I had. So Pro Taper KLX 110s is what I chose. It's gonna be a wider and a little bit lower of a bar as well as being strong, so you don't have to worry about it breaking. Um, highly recommend this bar setup for pretty much anybody getting into a Grom or Z125. I love those bars. Uh, if you're not looking for, if it's a little too wide for you, then I'd recommend the Honda mini bars. But these specifically, I recommend for stunters just because it's gonna have a lot more handlebar real estate for the handbrake and you know the clutch and you get it. Now, while I was at it and changing out the handlebars, I might as well put a new set of grips on there because the stock grips are fine, but you just want something a little different. So I installed the ProGrip 719 grips. I love those grips very much. They're actually on every single one of my motorcycles, which is kind of showing you how much I like these grips. Check them out if you haven't already. Along with that, I installed an ASV brake lever that's a little bit shorter, just looks better overall than the stock. Kind of a personal preference thing at that point. Uh, then the RSC lever for the clutch, which was eventually replaced with an impact tech lever just because I didn't want a green lever on a yeah, I didn't want green. So I wanted to buy a new lever and try it out the Impact Tech. RSC versus Impact Tech, it, they're literally about the same. The, the pull is about the same. Impact Tech might be a little bit easier to pull, but the biggest difference to me is the RSC lever is a little bit more streamlined and slick, where the Impact Tech is more boxy and has a little bump out on the end so your finger doesn't slip off. So that's why I chose an Impact Tech clutch lever. Oh yeah, and I have a small little bicycle mirror to have a mirror. It, it doesn't work that well. So one thing I wanted to do too is install a handbrake setup, but with the stock control unit, it was just too big. So I had to install a eBay switch or an eBay control, I guess you could say. Um, I have a full video in the description. Every single part that I'm going over right now has a video in the description linked. So definitely make sure to check that out. I'm gonna spend a lot of time making that for you guys, so please check it out if you guys are interested. But uh, that video will show you how to wire it and everything, but it's just personal preference. It's just what I like, um, and that gave me a lot more of that handlebar real estate that we were talking about. So I was able to fit the handbrake, which is a Magura HC1. Highly recommend that. If not that, the Brembo, but the HD one's a little bit better. Not too much of a difference. And then at the back, it goes from, a, from that stainless steel line and then eventually goes to a P32F caliper. Um, just a heads up, get the P34 if you're gonna get a handbrake. It's, it's not a big difference, but I just wish I would have got the better P34 uh, caliper. So now we're moving to some stunt parts. We went ahead and installed the ZZ Customs pegs and ZZ Customs axle sliders, which I am super happy with. They're all in the Blueberry Illusion color, uh, which was kind of the blue theme that I was going for at the time. It's kind of like a yellow and blue. Eventually it looked better as you could see here. Uh, but I really do like these pegs. They're really strong, haven't had any issues with them other than the shifter kind of sticks every now and then. But just spray some WD-40 in there every now and then, or put some waterproof grease. If you use this waterproof grease stuff, it works wonders. Just pack it in there, take off your shifter, pack it in there, and then literally slip it back on and you won't have any issues. So just kind of a heads up if you do want to get these pegs. That's the only issue I have is with the shifter kind of catching every now and then just because of the dirt and grime. So this helps a lot. Next up, we wanted to make the bike pop just a little more. So 
well, by pop, I mean pop for wheelies. So we took off the clutch cover and changed out three of these springs to Busa springs. Um, so it's gonna be a stiffer spring. And then with a stiffer spring, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and change out the RPM plate to something a little stronger. I'm using the Koso RPM plate, so that way it doesn't crack. Um, with both of those things, you're gonna get a lot more pop for your wheelies, so when you pop the clutch, it's gonna pop instead of just kinda of And while I had the clutch cover off, I went ahead and installed a straight up pumps oil pump just to basically get the oil pickup closer to the back. Uh, that way when you're in a wheelie, it's not gonna be oil starved. So if you don't know about that and you're into stunting, definitely look that up. Again, the description, it will describe everything. I just don't want this video to be 30 minutes long, so I'm trying my best. Next up is some random stuff. I went ahead and changed out the tail light because I wanted turn signals in it. So it's a custom LED tail light. It's gonna be brighter, a lot brighter I should say. Um, it's going to have turn signals in it and it's going to flash when you hit the brake light. It has different modes and everything. Um, I went ahead and changed out the sprocket to a 14 tooth front sprocket. Again, you want more acceleration and more pop. So if you're into stunning 14 tooth or 13 tooth if you do a lot of uh, lot sessions. Um, let's see, what else? Let me cheat off my list here. Oh yeah, I went ahead and changed out the calipers to black calipers so that way uh, it would tie in with the bike better because red calipers on this would kind of look ridiculous. And with the blue theme, uh, not blue theme, but blue accent theme, I went ahead and installed the Cormoto stainless steel lines in the blue color, whatever blue it is. Okay guys, the next one is a big one. Uh, the front forks on a stock Grom are just terrible, especially for wheelies, off-roading. You're gonna bottom out constantly, so I highly recommend this setup. If you go and get a full all-in setup, it is stiff as hell. It is so stiff. So try someone's out if you know some people that has a full all-in setup so you know if you want that kind of stiff or not, but it literally hurts my wrists. So I'm not gonna have that. So I have a Olin's spring drop-in kit from Hard Racing. Uh, it's like a $90 spring and spacer is all it is, uh, or I say springs and spacer. And then I put thicker oil in it. I believe I'm running 10 weight. I'm running 10 weight oil with the springs. Highly recommend it. Really, really nice. Um, it's a little bit stiffer than a Z125. Don't hate, a Z125 forks are way better stock. To go along with the stunt protection, I went ahead and got a Zab Fab sub cage, which I really like and I have no issues with, but I'm honestly not sure if they're still around anymore. I've heard from people that they're not making sub cages anymore, but I still see their website. So if you're interested in the sub cage, they might still be around, but if they're not, I highly recommend getting something or some kind of sub cage if you're into stunting that has sliders on the sides that are replaceable so that way if you fall it you know protects the bike and then get some type of slider for the back because back in the day when i had a z125 uh, i didn't have a slider on the back and that thing was getting ruined so just get a slider on the back and some on the sides that way they're replaceable and it's totally fine also, a titanium slider on the back is super cool because when you get good at scrapes, which I wish I had a titanium one, but if you go back, it like scrapes everywhere. It's super cool. But I have a, I have a plastic one and it, the plastic kind of melts away. That's about it. Oh yes, the Dingerbilt parts. How glorious. Custom Dingerbilt exhaust. You can, Take out the packing and replace it if you want to. Super nice sound, really deep and just The looks of it are amazing. I love that he put his little logo on there and everything. Like, dude, love the exhaust. Couldn't be happier with it. It's off the, off the ground a lot, so you don't hit stuff on it a lot. Love the exhaust. But that's not even the best part. The intake is the complete game changer. It's the medium length intake. Now, the short intake that Dinger makes is fine and it's good for horsepower and top end. But the medium length intake, wow. So much more torque, um, a ridiculous amount. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Um, a lot more torque. You're gonna be able to pop up wheelies a lot faster or 
better, uh, whatever. And your acceleration is gonna be a lot better because again, the medium length intake is designed to just improve torque. And that's what I wanted with the Grom. I just wanted torque. Horsepower's cool and all, but torque is what you want. Um, now, with the intake and the exhaust, you do need some kind of fuel controller. So I took out my ECU and sent it off to DH Motoring to get tuned. And I had zero issues. Uh, it's a 10,000 RPM limit now, other than I think it's like 9,600 or something like that normally. But it's a 10,000 RPM limit now, so my top end speed is a little bit better, as well as just the overall performance. Uh, but kind of FYI, DH Motoring did my first tune and I had zero issues with it, but I'm now working with CJR Performance. They're probably about the same with tunes. I mean, I didn't really see a huge difference at all, uh, but both of the tunes work really well and I highly recommend both of them if you wanna get a tune for a Grom without having to go out and buy like a Power Commander or, you know, iRacer setup. Yeah, you, you get it. It's, I'm just trying to save you some money. Now, shortly after I installed all these things, I went to Grom Day last year and everything was going fine until it wasn't. Um, I literally thought I blew up my motor and it was because oil actually got into the intake from the crankcase breather, which is connected to the intake. So if you end up stunning a lot and you're, especially if you do wheelies at high speeds, you're gonna wanna do this. It's a clean air mod is what I call it. Uh, basically all you do is you take a crankcase breather hose the stock hose is all you need. And then you put a filter on the end. That way, if oil ever comes out of it, it goes outside of the bike and gets on your pants or your shoes versus inside your motor. And I've already ruined one pair of pants like that. Next up was something I thought was just cool and something that I wanted, which was more light for the headlight. Um, I thought about changing it to an LED and being done with it, but I was like, shoot, triple LED light bar. So that's what I did. Um, I'd recommend getting like the brackets off like Amazon or eBay and then if you want the triple LED light bar or whatever buy the LED light bars later um, Get something good. Don't buy something that's ten dollars for two or you know Twenty dollars for two just just pay decent money to get a light that's gonna put out a good amount of light um, I think mine were the night lights from Amazon uh, two of them are like 40 bucks or something like that. It could be off on the price. And then the other one was from my Z125 and that one's actually a little bit brighter and I don't even remember where I bought that. So just look at how many watts it is, look at reviews, stuff like that, and get something that's actually worth something versus just getting a cheap LED thinking they're all the same because th they're just not. Now, just because I'm going in chronological order, I wanna let you guys know I did install a TB cam uh, it gave me a lot better top end and I made a video about it. It's like, I think it's the most viewed video uh, at the moment. Um, it's, it's a really good cam and I'm not saying it's a bad cam. Um, for most people, if you're looking for performance, highly recommend it. It is so much more powerful on the top end. You could see in the videos that I, again, have them in the description if you wanna check them out. Uh, but in my personal opinion, I just wanted something for stunting. I didn't want to go super fast on the highway. So I just went back to the stock cam and that was, that was kind of it. But you know, you pick whatever you want. So here's a really fun one and a cheap one for you guys that are looking for some kind of small mod. Um, I installed a six tone car alarm horn that is really fun and it annoys the hell out of everyone in the vicinity. I love the horn. It's so much fun to whistle at girls and like joke around and uh, you can tap the horn real quick and it sounds like a cop. Just check out the video and see what I'm talking about. But it's, it's so much fun and for, I think it's like $7 on eBay, so much fun. Uh, I love it. It's just, it's not waterproof. So keep that in mind. So next up on the list, I saw Dingerbilt was making titanium parts and immediately I contacted him and was like, yo, when you come out with these things, I want some. So I bought some immediately when he came out with them and I have like little titanium bolts that kind of match the blue theme and they look really cool. And then the exhaust studs as well are cool as well. So um, lightweight, bro. So now we are here to present day and the last modification that I made was gonna be the Dingerbilt graphics kit, which came out amazing. If you guys haven't seen 
to wrap it. It, 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 look, it looks sick. I love it. Um, and it came out really good. And honestly, I, I like the yellow on my bike, but I didn't really like it. There was a couple issues. I don't know. It just, I, I outgrew it and I was just looking for something. This matches my FZ07. Um, I, I just, I love, love, love to look at my bike now. Before I was just like, yeah, that's my Grom. But now I just, I want to show my Grom. I'm excited about it. So i um, super thankful to have the opportunity to put this graphics kit on because like it's, it's sick. I was wondering how good it was going to look. And when I got it done, I was just, I was shell shocked. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for the list. If I did miss anything, let me know in the comments and I'll kind of like add it in the uh, description or something. I'm sure I'd probably miss something. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying my best here. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think about my setup. And please, 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 if you enjoyed this video, this video, at the time of recording this, I haven't edited it yet, but I know it's going to take me so long to edit it and add all the links and everything. It's going to take me forever. So please like the video. Um, you know, the more likes I get, the more it gets shared out. So I definitely appreciate any support, but liking the video takes two seconds. So just, just, Thanks. Thanks, man. Anyways, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time and let me know what you guys want to see next. I really don't know what else to do to my bike, so uh, let me know. But for now, I'm just going to call it a day. Go do some wheelies. Have some fun. See you guys next time.